Insane, ridiculously unconventional flavors are a hot new fad in the ice cream world. From Van Leeuwen's macaroni and cheese variety to Jenny's pints of everything bagel. Darkly fascinating? Sure. Delicious? Uh, you decide. But these are just one-off, innovative experiments designed to grab your attention. There are plenty more ice cream flavors that sound wild and different to the American palate, but already have millions of established fans around the world. Today, we're talking unexpected ice cream flavors, and traditional recipes in their home countries that somehow never made the trek to North American freezers. But before that big scoop, be sure to subscribe to Weird History Food Channel and let us know in the comments below which dessert history you would like to hear about. Now, one video scoop or two. The lacuma is a subtropical fruit native to valleys below the Andes Mountains, in South American countries like Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, and Peru. Humans have been consuming the fruit for, at the very least, hundreds of years. We have references to it on pottery dating back from before the Incan Empire, which extended from the Peruvian city of Cusco starting in the 15th century. Lacuma fruit is encased in brownish or yellowish-green skin and has bright, golden-yellow flesh, similar in color to an egg yolk. Some cultures even refer to the lacuma as egg fruit for this reason, though maybe also because it's fun to throw at people if you don't like them. Flavor-wise, it's distinctly non-fruity, but usually compared to more rich, decadent flavors like cinnamon, maple, and butterscotch. It's not the flavor profile that has kept lacuma from spreading around the world, as so many other exotic fruits have done in the past, but more practical concerns. Because of its particularly soft flesh and tendency to rapidly lose water, lacuma fruits don't stay fresh long enough for overseas journeys. Though the fruit is enjoyed across the entire Andean region, the lacuma flavor is particularly popular in Peru, where it's a fixture in ice cream shops right alongside classics like chocolate and vanilla. As with strawberry ice cream here in the U.S., lacuma-flavored desserts will include little chunks of fruit and bits of pulp for added flavor and texture. Peruvians even enjoy lacuma in place of strawberry in their local version of Neapolitan ice cream. Tamarind trees are actually native to Africa, but the Spanish brought them to Mexico in the 16th and 17th centuries, and now their fruits are something of a local favorite. The trees bear fruit in long, lumpy pods that contain a sticky brown pulp, which has been used in various cultures as food, but also for medicine and even as a polish for brass and copper. The seeds have uses as well. An oil extracted from tamarind seeds is used to make industrial gums and adhesives and in textile processing. Okay, but back to eating it. Americans aren't entirely unfamiliar with tamarind. It's a common ingredient in many condiments like barbecue or Worcestershire sauce and can be purchased in a lot of markets stateside, either fresh or as a paste, powder, and syrup. Still, it's far more popular as a flavoring south of the border. In Mexico, tamarind is offered as a common variety in beverages, candies, ice pops, known locally as paleta, and ice creams. Bread-flavored ice cream may sound like a peculiar concept. That's for sandwiches, not dairy desserts. But in the British Isles, sweet brown bread has been mixed in with frozen treats since Victorian times. In particular, Irish brown bread works well for this purpose because it's a quick bread, produced by combining baking soda and buttermilk instead of rising the conventional way through the use of yeast. Quick breads are denser than their yeasty cousins, so when they're mixed in with ice cream, you get an appealing balance of textures, kind of like a cookie dough or those Ben & Jerry's flavors with brownie bits mixed in. In Ireland, brown bread is a common ice cream flavor all on its own, while bits of sweet brown bread may also be mixed in with other complementary flavors, such as butterscotch. The term mastic actually refers to a resin that's excreted as sap from mastic trees. Humans have enjoyed chewing on this sap in its dried form for thousands of years, since the time of the ancient Greeks. We're just sap chewers from way back. Western history's first physician, the great Hippocrates, mentions mastic specifically as a preventative treatment for digestive problems and colds, plus a handy way to freshen your breath. They were like the Mentos of the ancient world. In fact, this is where we get the English word masticate, meaning to chew. In ancient times, farmers would strategically cut mastic trees, allowing the sap to ooze out and harden in the form of small, brittle droplets. As the trees are native to the Greek Isle of Chios, these droplets were sometimes known as the Tears of Chios. Aw, pumpkin. Today, mastic is still enjoyed in the eastern Mediterranean and sold at markets in the form of little crystals that can be crushed into a powder. This is then used to flavor everything from pastries to puddings to chewing gum and, you guessed it, based on the topic of this video, ice cream. Flavor-wise, mastic is initially bitter until it's chewed and softened and is sometimes compared to pine needles. Which, sure, doesn't really sound like it would make for a delicious ice cream flavor, but perhaps it's an acquired taste, and you use a lot of extra sugar. And speaking of plants Americans don't usually eat, 
Rose water is produced by distilling rose petals with steam. It's used as a flavoring for sweet treats around the globe, from Turkish baklava to Indian lassi to, yes, Persian ice creams. In fact, though 21st century Americans weren't huge flower eaters, it used to be much more common even here in the U.S. of A. Rose water is featured in the very first published American cookbook, Amelia Simmons's 1796 guide, American Cookery, in which it is used to flavor pound cake, gingerbread, and apple pie. In present-day Iran, Bastani Sanadi, or classical ice cream, is flavored with a combo of rose water and saffron, vanilla, and sometimes pistachios. It's not just unique among ice creams in terms of flavor, but also texture. Classical ice cream is made with a thickening agent known as salab, produced from wild orchids, that gives the dessert a stretchy chewiness not present in traditional ice creams. It's also sometimes littered with small frozen chunks of fresh cream mixed in. Perhaps most unusual for the American palate, though, is the customary serving style. Iranians often enjoy their bastani sanadi scooped into a glass of carrot juice. Sort of like a root beer float, but, you know, richer in vitamin A. Hey, it's good for your eyesight. Black sesame-flavored ice cream is arguably as popular across Asia as vanilla is in the United States. In addition to their appealing charcoal-like color, the seeds impart a rich, nutty flavor to foods. In ice cream, it adds a layer of depth and complexity to the flavor profile, similar to additives like coffee or chocolate. When mixed in with other foods, usually the sesame seeds are ground up until they become creamy. In Japan, the same ground up mixture can also be combined with honey to create a thick paste called nirigoma, which is aromatic and also strongly nutty and somewhat similar to tahini. It's used in dressings, sauces, desserts, and even as a base for some noodle soups. Some common Japanese ice cream flavors have already made their way to U.S. parlors and freezers, including red bean, green tea, and ginger, so it may be only a matter of time before Americans develop a taste for black sesame as well. Kinako is a roasted flour made from soybeans that's also common in Japanese cuisine. The word itself just means yellow flour in Japanese. When used in pastries or other desserts in place of traditional white flour, it adds a toasty, nutty kind of flavor. Japanese people sometimes like to sprinkle kinako on top of other foods, like ice cream and shaved ice, as a finishing touch. It's particularly popular on vanilla ice cream or paired with toppings like brown sugar, banana, or nuts. As well, kinako is one of those flavors that shows up from time to time in all kinds of Japanese desserts and confections. Even Japanese Kit Kats have been made available in a kinako variety. Yeah, they get flavored Kit Kats while Americans make do with just the left versus right varieties. It's a travesty. Why not Kit Kats in traditional U.S. flavors, like Coca-Cola or tobacco? Ube is the Filipino name for a root vegetable that's very much like an American yam or sweet potato, only bright purple in color. In Asia, they're boiled and then mashed and included as an ingredient in a number of foods, prized for both their sweet flavor and ability to turn whatever else you're eating purple. The flavor is sometimes compared to earthier white chocolate or a combination of vanilla and pistachio. Sweet. It's used in cakes and cookies and, of course, ube are commonly found in Filipino ice cream, along with a shaved ice dessert known locally as Halo Halo. The bright colors mean that ube-flavored treats are extremely Instagram-friendly, so they've started to find a fan base in the U.S. as well. It's tricky to find fresh ube in the U.S., but lots of ethnic food stores feature the powdered, paste, or extract varieties. India is the world's largest producer of cardamom, sometimes known as the queen of spices, but it's enjoyed all over the world. You know how the historical spice trade was super important and Europeans were desperate to get their hands on the best flavorings from the exotic east? Cardamom is one of those spices they were talking about. The ancient Greeks and Romans were huge fans, and in the medieval period, much of the wealth of Venice was based on its geographical significance as a hub for cardamom export to the West. The green variety of cardamom is most associated with sweet dishes like beverages and desserts, and black cardamom is too smoky and pungent to make good ice cream. In its native India, cardamom shows up in a popular ice cream dish known as kulfi, which also contains pistachio, saffron, and rose water. Its unique flavor comes from simmering the milk for hours before freezing to add notes of caramelization, but cardamom Cardamom is common in other regions, too. In fact, other than India and some parts of the Middle East, Scandinavia consumes more of the spice than anywhere else in the world. America does have one strange, unfamiliar ice cream variety of its very own, provided you're willing to trek far enough to the north. Native Americans enjoy a frozen treat known as a kudik, an indigenous word meaning to stir. The dish is made by whipping animal vats by hand, usually from a caribou, bear, or musk ox, then slowly adding sea mammal oil, snow, and water until the mixture achieves a fluffy texture. When prepared today, Crisco and olive oil are often substituted for the harder-to-find caribou and whale oil. This whip is then mixed with either sweet or savory ingredients to produce a meal. 
Adding in blood, meat, fish, and eggs makes it a main course, while adding blueberry or locally grown salmon berries makes it a dessert. Salmon berries get their name, by the way, because they were frequently consumed along with fresh salmon by the native peoples of Alaska's coastline. Not because they taste fishy. They're still berries, after all. So what do you think? Which exotic ice cream flavor would you most want to try? Let us know in the comments below and check out some other videos from Weird History Food.